Hi, good morning and welcome to today's Products in Focus. Most global equity markets are trying to recover uh, following from uh, from Friday's sell-off. Had a little bit of a bounce back last night, but then moving a little bit lower this morning with 70 to 895 coming up as the next potential support and 70, maybe about 18,000 be the next potential uh, resistance. And we had one of the Fed uh, members, uh, Fisher, having his last FOMC uh, speech last night where he advocated the, um, the en- a uh, faster increase in interest rates. So that is happening sooner but less deeply than leaving it to later and then having to accelerate more aggressively. So that's had quite a big positive effect for the US dollar. We'll come back to that in just a second. So looking at the UK 100, uh, not such a great picture actually. I'm surprised we didn't have that same bounce back we had in the uh, in, in US stocks last night, but we're now broken below the 21 period SMA, below 69.06. And now the next potential support is at 67.71, which would probably coincide with that 55 period SMA once things catch up. Other technicals are relatively neutral, um, mm-hmm. trending downwards right there. In fact, the UK 100 looks particularly ugly even versus the Germany 30, which is still moving in the right direction. Japan 225, um, down today, volatile session yesterday. But we have seen uh, a lot of movement in dollar yen overnight, so a lot of yen weakness, which should be actually helping the Japan 25 to push on higher. And this is obviously recent recent highs, but it looks to be that 18648 is a potential pivot level, potential support level. The markets might be looking for a springboard to move higher, which also might coincide with the 21 period SMA. But that is a bearish engulfing pattern we're getting on the candlestick formations right now. We've got a bearish cross on the MACD, a sell signal on the stochastic, and we're just about to get a technical sell signal for. Uh, from the RSI as well. So it doesn't really look that great. If we get a close below 18,648, um, that could open up um, 18,300, um, but we're not there yet. It has already had a bounce this morning. So if you have a look at that dollar yen, you can see it's come from, uh, comfortably smashed through uh, a previous resistance, um, breaking above 122 for the first time uh, since 2007. It's reached the highest uh, since 2007 there anyway. Uh, 124.42 is the next potential resistance level. Looking at this right now, it's, it's been a number of months in the, in, in, the, in the waiting since the start of December there. It's tried to break on higher, and that comes after an unbelievable rally point that we had there uh, starting uh, towards the end of summer last year. So if the dollar advancing across the board uh, dollar yen looks particularly vulnerable especially as they are um, embarking your own stimulus measures across there but let's come back to uh, the euro in a minute as well because obviously the ecb just started at their own stimulus measures there this month so looking at west texas crude uh, still moving in the sideways uh, sideways market fifty dollars seems to be seems to resonate around that level um, not really expecting anything else to to come out of west texas over the next couple of sessions and, crude, and of course we might get crude oil inventories tomorrow um, but that's not been having a massive impact the last couple of days gold has been the um, probably the worst hit uh, as of this potential rate hike that we might be getting in June, which is a, a month that everybody keeps kind of bandying around. Um, it's getting absolutely smashed just now. Uh, down lower again today, 11.37 is the next potential support level. Any piece of uh, US data, I think you have to wait until Thursday before you get anything quite that decent. Uh, and then we do actually have um, some ECB meetings on on Thursday as well, so a whole raft of stuff to come out. Um, moving on to your dollar, you can see that your dollar is just hitting one spot zero seven eighty six, which is that uh, support level from from back in the day. I think it's about two thousand and three. If we break below that, then it opens up one hundred two twenty three, and then we're looking at parity after that. So the fundamentals for the euro is are is not really that strong right now, and the dollar is definitely opening up a, a fair lead against a common currency. So moving on to GBP USD, we had a little bit of a rebound yesterday, down again today. One spot fifty one eighty five is potential resistance. One spot forty eight thirteen remains to be the potential support. Technicals are neutral, but the MACDs just crossed the zero line. We're obviously trading below both, both moving averages. Could be a death cross happening there at some point. As long as we stay below one spot of 51.85, the pressure will remain on a cable going forward. So we already had some data come out of the out of China. So their inflation data came out better than expected. So it's 1.4% for the CPI versus 0.9 expected. Um, there's not a huge amount else due today. Uh, neither on Wednesday, actually. I think you've got crude oil inventories, that's it. And then you have to go into Thursday before you've got a raft of German CPI, uh, 
UK trade balance, you've got Eurozone industrial production, US employment claims, US retail sales. Um, so we do have a, a fair amount of, uh, of macro events on Thursday, and that's when people look for, for additional confirmation as to the non-farm payrolls figure being strong. Um, let's see if it can follow up. And historically, the macro data coming out of America has been pretty mixed, to say the least. Um, so Thursday will be a big test. As ever, keep your eye on the chart forum, make insights party later going forward, and join me again tomorrow to find out what happened next.